On this week's Tune-Up Thursday, we're going to do the drill press. And the drill press is a very simple machine, but it, if you don't maintain it, there's a lot of things that can slowly, slowly affect performance and go wrong over a long period of time. So I'm going to show you those things, how to get this thing dialed in, working correctly so that uh, not only is it square, but it drills accurate holes and all those things. Um, but before we tune this up, my buddy, friend, and neighbor, Sean Boyd, is out of town. So I've printed out about 30 pictures of Nicolas Cage. We're going to go hide them in his office. And I'll be damned if I didn't get really turned on. Now, you guys, this is going to come out before he gets back. So don't blow it. Don't tell him. Keep it a secret until he gets back. So he should be back next week. Uh, so don't blow it before then. Thanks. Let's go uh, Nicolas Cage, Sean's office. <laughs> oh, I can't wait till Sean gets back. That is going to be great. Um, all right, so for tuning up a drill press, simple, just need a few things. Uh, like we've talked about in a lot of the other tool tune-up videos, a little glide coat drying lubricant. Um, I'll link all this below. Some WD-40, my chuck is removed with a set screw, so I need Allen keys. A lot of times you just need a dead blow mallet, um, which a lot of these you can just knock loose. I'm gonna use a wire brush, some acetone, uh, or some other degreaser to clean some moving parts. But uh, again, simple machine. Uh, we're gonna start by cleaning it like we always do on Tune Up Thursday, but we're gonna take out the chuck. We're gonna make sure we clean inside here. This is one of the really important things to clean because over time, if you get buildup of material in here, you're your chuck's gonna start grabbing your drill press off center. So if you're getting poor performance, that could just be the simplest solution for you is cleaning out the inside of your chuck. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this, clean and degrease all of our moving parts, not the pulleys and the belt. You don't wanna put acetone on uh, a rubber belt, but all of the moving metal parts we're gonna clean and degrease and then put the drying lubricant on and the WD-40 we're gonna use for the table, the raising and lowering of the table. So let's, let's get started. All right, so now look at this, this is so awesome. I don't think this chuck's been taken off in 70 years and that I got so much gunk out of there and I bet it's gonna be so much more accurate because you saw those Q-tips. I mean, that gunk can build up on one side and cause it to think, so you, you know it's tight, it is tight, but there's something kind of a thin layer on one of the jaws of your chuck and so your drill press will be slightly off center. So now that we've done that, we're gonna use a drying lubricant. Drying lubricant is really important here because this is a high sawdust area, and so it'll just build up more gunk if you're not using a drying lubricant. So I'm gonna spray my chuck, and we're gonna do it while it's open and closed and rotate it a few times as the lubricant dries. Now, if you're like me, and you have a tapered chuck, so that it basically just friction fits on, try not to spray it on the tip of your quill here, otherwise it might come off and, and not taper very well. Okay, the next thing you wanna check is your belt tension and that your belt is looking good with no cracks, frays, anything like that. Your pulleys are looking good. Uh, that's just a visual inspection. Um, for the tightness of your belt, you don't want it to deflect more than a quarter inch. For me, <laughs> You know, I don't have a manual to this old drill press, so I kind of had to figure things out. So for me, it's these two bolts on either side, and then I'm going to use a spanner here, which is just my clamp turned around. These DeWalt clamps are actually kind of cool for that. And I'm going to push this motor out until it has less than a quarter inch of deflection. And, oh, looks like we're going too much on one side here. So there we go, that seems like the right amount of tightness. This drill press is a little complicated to do this, but if you have a newer one, it should be really easy. You also wanna make sure that all your speeds are working. So plug it in and rotate through all your speeds and make sure there's no loud noises or anything while it's going. But there we go, that's nice and tight. 
That'll probably make a big difference. That was really loose when I checked it. You know, with these old drill presses, I got this in a garage sale and it is so new that you can see there's even still the safety stickers on it right here. This thing was like unused, but it also hasn't been maintained. And even if something is sat for 50 years, that doesn't mean that it still works great. So I'm glad that I'm really doing this. And I don't have the user manual. There was a lot of stuff online about it, but no really good sort of maintenance thing or taking the chuck off. That was kind of interesting. I'm really glad I did this. So this finishes up all the mechanical things we need to do. And next we're gonna work on making sure there's no run out in the quill and that the table is square to the chuck. Jiminy. One quick thing that I forgot to do before we start checking run out and squareness of the table is just clean your post and, or whatever raises your table mechanism. Give that a clean and a lubrication with the drying lubricant. Okay, so now we're gonna check run out and that is if your chuck or your quill are spinning non-cocentrically, not in a circle. If it's not a smooth spin, if it has a, kind of a wobble rotation. And what's great for these, you wanna use something with a smooth shaft. I'm gonna be using my router centering cone. I talk about these in my router skills video, which I'll link right here. And this is great because you know that it's already machined true because it's for centering routers, so it's good. So we're gonna throw that in our chuck. The other thing that's great to have is one of these test indicators. This is great for all tool tune-ups, restorations, whatever. A test indicator is great and they're not that expensive. I got this one for 30 bucks uh, and it's got this movable arm where it can go anywhere you want. It's got the magnetic base. So I love this thing. I'll link this down in the comments as well as the description. This is really cool. So what you're gonna do for this, you wanna make sure your machine is unplugged. You could probably get away with using a square here and just seeing if it gets closer to the square at all. So you basically just wanna zero it out, make sure it's at zero and then slowly spin your chuck and read it while you're not touching it. And shoot, three thou, that's nothing. There we go, it's good, no run out. So now let's go ahead and check this for square. We're gonna use the same smooth shaft as we did before, and uh, then we should be just about done. Okay, now when you're checking for square, you wanna bring your quill down, probably close to fully extended so you get the most amount out of it that you can. Then you're gonna take a square. This, these engineered squares are great, I'll also link those. Um, I'll link everything I used in this video down in the description, but you're just gonna take that and pull it up next to it. And you can see there's no light, top or bottom, that's good to go. If you did, if you were out of square, most drill presses, uh, not this one, I don't even know what I would do if this was out of square, because it's so old, it's just a steel post. Um, but that's back when they used to make tools really, really strong and heavy duty. Um, sorry, there's my old tool rant. Um, most drill presses will have adjustments underneath the table and make sure that your table is locked down while you're making the adjustments. You don't wanna have it loose because then it might have a little slop in it. So make sure you lock it down first and then do your adjustments and then you wanna make sure, just like that, that there is no light top or bottom. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and take our smooth shaft out of here and wrap this thing up. Woo, baby! This thing purrs like a kitten now. I mean, this thing is probably 70, yeah, 69 years old, and it, I got it for 50 bucks at a garage sale, if I didn't already tell that story. Um, but it, it probably had never been taken apart. It was like brand new. And now, I mean, look, you can even do the chuck with your bare hands, which I've always wanted. I've never been able to, I had to get that stupid little chuck out and just crank on it forever. So I'm really happy with this. And uh, I really, that's what Tool Tune Up Thursday is about. It's, it's taking your tools and making sure next time you have a fine woodworking project, everything's dead N-U-T-S and you're just ready to go. These things take about 10, 15 minutes to do and they really come out great. Guys, <laughs> thanks to Sean for being a good sport. And remember, don't ruin that. He's gonna be, he's gonna be back in about a week. So don't tell him I did that. Um, but in the honor of Sean Boyd and the prank we pulled on him, uh, let's sign this off Sean Boyd style. So if you and your drill press aren't on the same page, don't worry, get yourself a Nicholas Gage. <laughs> Stay safe in the shop, guys. Have a wonderful day.